U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen is super chill about the United States potentially bankrolling two overseas wars. Let's watch. What this all means. Paul Tudor Jones, the famed investor, was on CNBC this week, and he said, this is the most threatening and challenging geopolitical environment that I've ever seen. At the same time, the U.S. is in its weakest fiscal position since World War II, with debt to GDP at 122 percent. Can, can America, can the West afford another war at this time? I, I think the answer is absolutely. Um, America can certainly afford to stand with Israel and to support Israel's military needs. And we also can and must support Ukraine in its struggle against Russia. And look, the American economy is doing extremely well. What this all means. President Biden also echoed this sentiment during his interview on 60 Minutes last night. Let's watch that. The wars in Israel and Ukraine, more than the United States can take on at the no, same time. We're the United States of America, for God's sake. The most powerful nation in the history, not in the world, in the history of the world. The history of the world. We can take care of both of these and still maintain our overall international defense. We have the capacity to do this, and we have an obligation to. We are the essential nation, as to, to, to Paris phrase, the former Secretary of State. And if, if we don't, who does? But GOP 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy touched on this subject as well, with conservative commentator Stephen Crowder saying something slightly different. Let's listen. With a vague reference to almost Iran was what she invoked right before she said that. And then you talk about Mike Pence, just do it. It's like it's like a Nike. Finish them is from like Mortal Kombat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do it is like a Nike slogan. So they're like misappropriating corporate oh. slogans as though that's our form. But Lindsey Graham, what he said something equivalent to this. Now, I, to be fair, to be cool I did headed. say kill, kill every last one of Hamas. Absolutely. Hamas, every last member of Hamas. And that's Israel's decision to make. Right. And so Israel's making those decisions. I trust them to do the right thing. But we have to be very careful not to sleepwalk or emotionally outburst ourselves into another broad regional conflict that in the Middle East that the U.S. is enmeshed in with ground troops or otherwise. This is when we've made our worst foreign policy disastrous mistakes in the past. So if I'm talking to Bibi, I would say, listen up, we got your back. Um, him at the start of that clip referring to what Nikki Haley had said, finish them, et cetera. So I want to talk about you know, all these clips. So first, Janet Yellen saying, absolutely, we can afford another war. Why stop it, too? Why stop? We, we, could, we could support wars everywhere, I guess, according to her ideology. I, I guess we just, you know, she, we can just print as much money as we want and fund whatever we want without any consequences is um, her view. Um, you know, Joe Biden then saying, you know, we can and must do, you know, everything on, under the sun to uh, support our allies, and uh, then Vivek saying, and I'm, I'm sure you have many differences, and I have differences as well uh, with, with a lot of what he said there, but I think it's so important that someone on the GOP side in the GOP race for presidency is saying, let's not get dragged into a substantial conflict in the Middle East involving um, a, a broad array of American resources or American troops. He's run against people like Nikki Haley, like Mike Pence. I. I, don't, I guess I haven't specifically heard from Chris Christie yet. <laughs> I haven't specifically heard from Tim Scott and some of the others um, who are not uh, sounding that the anti-interventionist— No, you noted Ron DeSantis kind of uh, f being full-throated in terms of, of defending Israel. You know, Ron DeSantis being someone who— has a his, had a history of a more, kind of more hawkish um, standpoints, and then I think read the tea leaves with respect to Ukraine and how um, uh, how Republican voters don't actually support funding that conflict, and has kind of changed how he talks about it, mm -hmm. and, and we've wondered whether that's consistent. Here's where you know the true feelings emerge. If you're if you're gut reaction to this is, yeah, let's give Israel, let's give a foreign country everything it needs, let's commit vast American resources, um, you're probably not a very principled interventionist. So I was glad to hear Vivek pushing back against that. Yeah, I do think the problem with Vivek Ramaswamy is that he is trying to um draw lines and parse these issues in a way that don't really bear out in real-world foreign policy. So I think it's obviously an improvement upon, say, Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis for him to say, let's not beat the drums of war and say that they, Israel can be unlimitedly financed by the United States and whatever they do. But the choice to frame Israel as having an absolute right 
to do what it wants to do to kill Hamas, ignoring the reality that that involves killing many thousands at this point, and God knows how many untold more of innocent Palestinian civilians in the Gaza Strip and beyond, ignoring the fact that as part of its retribution against Hamas, apparently Israel has already attacked um, the international airport in Syria multiple times over the course of the last week, including just yesterday. Uh, the idea that letting Israel have carte blanche to avenge Hamas the way that it has been doing is not going to draw these other Arab nations into a conflict is deeply naive. Yeah, I don't think we should be saying that Israel should do whatever, it should use whatever methods at its disposal. We are, it is fine for us to critique, as many officials have, to say that Palestinian civilian casualties are completely regrettable and ought to be great pain should be taken to avoid them. Um, that innocent Palestinian lives lost are no different than innocent Israeli lives lost. and. Uh, some of, and much of this totalizing um, rhetoric is bad. But from a, you know, we're, we're, as we're as we're considering who will be the next U.S. president, who will be in charge of U.S. foreign policy, I want it to be someone who lives up to some of this America first rhetoric that we hear from a lot of Republicans um, on on our U.S. funding priorities. I don't think. And, and I think Vivek was getting around to saying that, that it necessarily enhances our national security to be funding and, and tacitly endorsing or, or directly endorsing every single action Israel takes against its neighbors. How does that help make us safer, given that terrorists who attack America justify what they're doing based on our support for Israel? Yeah. I mean, look, the reality is that the reason that America gives so much money to Israel are our regional geopolitical interests. Years ago, uh, Biden was famously quoted as saying, if there were no Israel, he actually said if there was no Israel, which I have some grammatical issues with, but if there was no Israel, we'd have to invent one. That is not going away. The, the reason why it, it is so significant that some politicians and individuals, activists, et cetera, over the course of American history have been willing to stand up to the uh, military industrial complex is because it's a lot bigger and a lot more powerful than just some saber rattling during the course of your presidential uh, campaign. Uh, Donald Trump talked a big game when he was running for president. And I think many people were hopeful that at very least, despite other critiques of his policy agenda and personal rhetoric, that he would hold the line on that. And I think there's a, a credible argument that he was better than some presidents with respect to foreign policy, but at the end of the day, largely went along with whatever the blob wanted him to do. Yeah. Vivek Ramaswamy showing a, an ounce more consistency than other presidential candidates. I think it's fair to give him credit on that and to note that. But the idea that his statements are still so milk toast, and th that there is not an understanding of how Israel's behavior in this moment is drawing in and, and escalating tensions with Iran, bombing your Arab neighbor uh, because they're of the belief that uh, Iranian weapons were coming through the Syrian airport. That is an international escalation of this. And so saying they have a right, these blanket statements, if they have a right to do what they need to do to avenge the 1,300 deaths last Saturday is directly in opposition to you saying that you don't want America to get into an escalated conflict, because we're not going to. The, 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 mili the American well, I, military is not well, going right. to let I'm go just, I'm just contrasting what he's saying with those who are saying America, uh, no, Israel I, has the right I, I to do what it's doing, and we're going to help it. Here you go. And I, I understand what you're saying, but I think it's important for the public to understand what the stakes are here, and that there's a, there's a humanitarian reason, I think, very strongly, to not allow, mm -hmm. to not endorse, as Joe Biden has up into this point, uh, kind of a, a limitless pogrom against yeah. all of the people of, of Gaza because of what Hamas did. And I also think that there are geopolitical and financial reasons for people who are invested in yeah. limiting American foreign spending um, to not doing that. You know, when, when Janet Yellen said this, we can afford two wars, the reaction from the left was very understandable. Okay, if we can afford two wars, why can't we afford, say, a mere $80, million, $80 billion to cancel all medical debt? People are out here in this country with this the medical debt that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. The idea that you could go into bankruptcy because someone in your family had cancer, these are not American priorities. I think Mehdi Hassan retweeted it and said, how about some Medicare for all instead? So I think that's one part of it. But honestly, like this is a very troubling escalation.
uh, with a lot of, with a lot of parties that aren't just uh, Israel and Hamas. And I think continually framing this as a Israel Hamas war does in some ways ignore the real dangers afoot. More rising right after this.